So, uh, time is running out, so maybe we should move on to the next solution, if that's okay with everybody, right? Even if you didn't write all the cases, it's not really important. I think you should have the ID, the general ID. So next, th this solution is almost simple, almost, uh, but it's not really satisfying because we had to do a full traversal of our tree <coughs> in order to collapse it into another schema, right? We apply our coalgebra to label all the nodes and then we collapse this label tree. So we do more work that we, than, than we need because we have a schema F, we should be able to immediately collapse it into uh, an average schema in only half a traversal, only a, a fold, right? The next solution will make us able to do that. Uh, before we move on to the, this solution, um, is there anybody who is not familiar with the concept of monad? Cool. And uh, traverse type class? Cool too. Okay, uh, so traverse uh, is basically a type class that um, if you have uh, an f of a and a function from a to g of b, so another, another factor, uh, if you traverse your f of a with that function from a to g of b, you don't get an f of g of b, like you would have if you had map this function, you get a g of f of b. So you see g has traversed f to, to get around, right? So, uh, so far we have seen only uh, simple algebras, sometimes with a, a, a different pattern, but always simple algebra. Every algebra can come with a, in a monadic flavor. So algebra can, can be, you, you can use algebra M, which is the same thing as algebra, but, but with a, a monad in the mix. Basically, algebra M, instead of being a function from F of A to A, is a function from F of A to M of A, M being a monad. And Julie, uh, co-algebra M is not a function from A to F of A. It's a function from A to F of M of A. Right? So in the monadic flavor, you wrap your result inside a monad. And the schemes that use this uh, algebra M and co-algebra M, say Anna M, Kata M, Heidel M, they will use the monadic bind of your monad at each step, right? So instead of just mapping over your functor, it will traverse your functor with the monadic bind inside the, 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 the function you pass to traverse. So that means at each, that means at each step, your monad will be used as the, as the context of each step. This allows plenty of cool tricks. For example, if you use, say, auction or disjunction as your monad, you will be able to short circuit the whole traversal. As long as your algebra returns none, there, there's nothing more you, you can do and the, the whole traversal will stop. That can be useful. Or in that case, you can use the state monad. And this means that at each step, you will be able to access a state that you can update and, and look up into in order to, in our case, make sure we are not recreating a record that we have already created. Does that make sense? Yep. If you short circuit using an option that returns none, does that mean you're pruning part of the tree potentially? Yeah, for example, yeah. That's it. Could you also use list to expand the tree? Um, 
I don't think it will expand the tree, but I don't know what, <laughs> what it would do. And maybe you, 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 with list as your monad, you can explore parallel universes. I, I, don't, I, I didn't try. We, we should try that and see, see what happens. Or maybe you will be doing the same things uh, multiple times. But here we, our monad will be state, a state parameterized with uh, what we call a registry, which is simply a map of from int to schema. And so we need a way to uh, compute an int, uh, an identifier for a record we are about to build. Then we can look up into the registry if there is already a record with that same fingerprint. In that case, we reuse the record we've already been built before. And if we have never built such a record, we build it and we re re register it inside our registry. I'm not sure this is making a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, you, you're inside a traversal, right? You're in the, the kata, the fold part of the traversal. Yeah. Although it, uh, in, in the previous solution, some, some, somebody had built a full tree, a fix of schema F, mm -hmm. and you are fully traversing it top down to label the, the, the nodes and bottom up to, to build the average schema. In the second solution, you could have loaded, uh, say, a parquet schema definition with the, high the unfold part of your traversal. You would have translated it to schema F. And now with the fold part, you translate it back to Avro. See, so we, 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 we gain alpha traversal. We just, we just need to do only what's needed to, to, to build the average schema and nothing more. OK, and state is just used throughout the course yeah. of the okay. So the next part is um, the rest of the project. We managed to negotiate with our product owner. We're supposed to handle arbitrary data as input to the data lake, but for now, as we need an MVP in half an hour, uh, <laughs> we decided that JSON is going to be the main data format that we are going to take as input. Okay? But uh, being the paranoid that we are all are, uh, we decided that any kind of data entering the data lake needs to become sanitized, checked, and validated. We are going to have schemas. These schemas will allow us to validate data. So first, we need a way to represent data. And once again, we are not exactly uh, coming from something that already exists. So we don't have to create the IDT itself. We can just stick, just like the schema, stick with the pattern functor. So we are basically making the dual uh, data to the schema F that we defined previously. But this time it, need, it needs to be data. So we are going to define a struct that is once again the fields, but this time it's not about schema. It's also a list map, but the A is not supposed to represent another schema. It's supposed to represent another data another piece of data. So you've got a struct with fields. You've got an array with this time a sequence of elements because it's an array. And you've got the simple values with this time concrete types used to represent not only that the column is a Boolean, but what is the value of this Boolean. And we are going to use also uh, Java until uh, date, double, float, int, longs, and string. We have everything we need to have a schema on one hand and the data on the other hand. Okay? So what are we going to do? 
we are going to use a library called uh, JTO uh, validation that allows you to define rules that from a G, from a J value, from a JSON value, will check a specific type for this value. So we are going to create with the from schema to rules, we are going to create a function that will take any uh, fix of schema f and will generate the rules to go from any JSON value to the fixed J data, J data. So we are going to transform any JSON that is going to come into our data lake into a rule that will validate its, this data and then project it to our pattern functor J data. Yeah. Rule does two things. It verifies that the data uh, has the correct structure, and it transforms it, if it has the correct structure, into something else. And if not, it will uh, uh, aggregate all the validation errors that were uh, encountered. Yeah. Can you uh, permit the test? Okay. There are specific tests associated to this function that will allow you to, very, to check that everything is working. So the schema rules in the schema, this, this one, one other. You've got two types of tests. You've got the Scala check tests that will generate arbitrary data. And you've got uh, lower, a very specific test case that gives you a precise example of what we are expecting. So you've got two fields, A and B. You've got the schema F, the expected J data, which is basically the dual of the schema before. And then you're going to generate rules. And these rules, once validated, once validating our JSON payload, should give us well, valid or invalid uh, data. And of course, the valid will contain the JData instance as well. OK? Any questions regarding this part? Could, could you say one more time, what's the meaning of val the how are we validating it? Yeah. So, uh, you validate, you validate uh, the JSON using that uh, rule abstraction that mm -hmm. comes from the JTO validation library. OK? Uh, you have a bunch of combinators to combine rules between them. So uh, maybe we can go through the most yeah. uh, useful. Yeah, let's go. Uh, and basically, uh, it produces rule is uh, something that has an applicative instance. You can, <laughs> if you have two rules, one rule for a string and one rule for uh, an int, you can uh, combine them applicatively to uh, validate something that has an int and a string and so on. So for example, using uh, the object rules, you've got specific rules to validate. If you see on the uh, top uh, part, you've got specific rules to validate, for example, that uh, we are expecting a float to come from the JSON data. Of course, JSON doesn't have the notion of, of float, double, long, etc. It has, it has the notion of a number. But it doesn't matter because we are going to use an engine that will try to parse it as a float. And if it works, will give us a valid float that, once again, we can combine with other rules to uh, have a full struct constructed, for example. Or it's going to give us an error message with the precise localization of the field that actually was problematic. So we are going to have a, a full validation process that is going to give us whether a list of errors or with precise localization of which field was a problem and or a valid uh, instance where uh, we have exactly the types we are um, expecting. 
Okay? So this gives you an example of what you can have with the rules. You're not going to try to validate, uh, once again, the objective of the method that you have to conceive is to go to use Matryoshka to generate these rules according to a schema F. You're basically uh, creating a rule engine <coughs> that will take any arbitrary schema, generate the rules to validate data according to this schema. But you're not trying to validate them. The test will. Which is another issue. How can you test something precisely and thoroughly when, when schema is arbitrary and data is arbitrary? That's the second part of the exercise where you need to generate a schema using Scala check and generate the data that is compatible with this schema using Scala check and Matryoshka. Okay? And you have put next. Yeah. As well. So the second round is like generate like data Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you are running um, uh, a scheme yeah. inside your tests, inside your generator to generate test data. Uh, so and you're, yeah. you <coughs> probably can become increasing. Uh, and, and you can, you know, go all the way, all yeah. the way down. Which is pretty cool. You're going to generate an arbitrary schema and use Matryoshka on this schema to generate data that is compatible with this schema. Yeah, In order to really test nice. another algebra you wrote 10 minutes before. And the problem is that for all use cases, it's going to be okay. You're going to be generating data that is supposed to be valid. So you're going to be able to test your rule engine on this data. Engine. But... Uh, in some cases, you will want as well to do uh, an algebra in your test to validate that actually the work was done properly. But that's another case. In our case, the tests are already writ written, so you don't have to care about that. The only thing that you're going to have to care about is that uh, the arbitrary, the generators, and the from schema to rules are on your watch. So, um, before we're finished, let's talk a bit about the solution of the validation. So, for the simple fields, for the simple fields, it's not that complicated. We've got specific rules that will allow us to uh, check that the JSON value that we see is actually valid or invalid. And then, valid is just a, a monad. So, you can just map on it and create what we need. What do we need? We need to have a JData at, at the end. So you need to be, a, precisely we need a fix of JData or using uh, the co-recursive, a dot embed to embed it in any fixed point, okay? So we're going to apply the simple rules like Boolean, uh, double, float, long, as you can see, we decided to encode any date using a string, f. So any field where we are expecting in the schema a date will be checked as a string and passed afterwards through another rule as a date. So we can combine the two rules with the rules.string or and then rules dot is a date or that will check the string according to a pattern, which is an ISO pattern. Okay? May, but afterwards, we still need to create the JDET corresponding to the valid value in order to have a JData. Okay? So we are creating the piece of data, the pattern functor fixed of each data, combining rules for the simple value. For the sequence of the array, well, it's basically the same thing. Once again, we are in an algebra. That means that part of the work has already been done on the lower levels. So LM in RAF is a sequence of rules, already pre-computed rules. So we need to create like the rule to govern them all, uh, the rule where 
I take all of the rules that are in the sequence of elements, and then, considering these rules as valid as well, I map on it to extract the J data values inside and create a JRA, once again fixed, embed. The most complicated part, which is difficult to guess in five minutes, is, yeah, is the fact that you will need to traverse all the fields of the struct and then reconstruct through that every uh, rule for every field. So you traverse the list, you, 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 you get the list of rules because we are in an algebra. Uh, precisely, it's a list of a pair of rules. You traverse that list using the fact that rule uh, as an applicative instance to build not a list of rule, but a rule of list. A rule, a rule of this map. And then you can map over it to build the to wrap this result in a just right. Track. And you're done. So once again, yeah, part yeah. once again, part of the job has already been done, but you need to traverse nonetheless to be able to reconstruct the rule itself. Does that mean if the schema is a Boolean or um, Boolean F, and you're expecting whatever JSON we get to be a Boolean? Is that what that means? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We are building uh, something that will look into the, the JSON at the right place, at the right time, and verify that it is a Boolean or a, a number or a string or an, an, an object and so on. And, and this it is... Will produce errors if it's not, or it will transform that JSON into our <coughs> representation of data, which is the J data. Uh, and this is way more intelligent ju than just serialization, their serialization, because this is a rule engine. So a boolean can be, well, strings yes or no, y or n, 0 or 1. You can define all the rules you want to define that I know that this is incorrect insanitized data, but I want to map it to a boolean properly in my system. And as we are building that without looking at the data, we are not looking at the data, we are looking at the schema. We are doing your, our recursion on the schema, the schema will control the rules that we will apply on the data, on the raw data. Okay? So, uh, thank you. You've been a fantastic audience. <laughs>